um, brushes preference. I was just kind of showing you guys like the size. So this is a two Rosemary and Company. This is like a three from, this is a plaid brush. It's a synthetic brush. So synthetic brushes will work just fine here. Um, but I just wanted to, to kind of give you an idea of the size. And then we're probably going to jump down for the details to like a zero. So as long as they have good points. Oh, somebody said, are we supposed to be able to hear the OSL class in the background? I'm not sure if that yeah. was a... I know that they are currently doing the OSL class on the Twitch stream, so if you currently have the Twitch stream pulled up, you will hear that. Yeah, because I don't, I don't hear anything. <laughs> oh, the uh, the reason for that is the way that the view is. Uh, there's two different views. There's a gallery view and a speaker view. So if I do start talking, it will uh, probably switch to my blank video screen um, rather than her video, which is why I usually stay muted for almost the entire time. Yes, what what was just said, feel free to ask questions. Oh yeah, and we're gonna use this in, in here. I normally I pass these out um, for people, but since we don't have in-person classes. But I do, I love these. Matt and Ben gave me some of these and they are fantastic and it allows me to show you the consistency of the paint. Hi, Joe. Tell Mace I said hi. <laughs> All right, I am going to get started in about two minutes. <laughs> that's what see you're living the convention life ty because the you know doing things in the last minute like that that's like um you know uh <laughs> how we paint competition minis in the last week uh, before show so i think you're you're embracing the convention life Hair dryers are paint dryers. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I see a couple, I had a couple more people drop in. Um, I'm gonna apologize in advance for fruit flies. That's what happens when you buy bananas this time of the year. Fruit flies. There's, there's a couple around my desk. Uh, um, all right. So I'm, yep, see, there was one. I'm going to get started. Uh, we have this class for roughly about two hours. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about getting started and what I, ha what I have on my desk here to use. Um, and then I'm going to go and work. I think what we're going to do is we're going to work on the cloak first um, and then work on our skin tones because I feel like that's less punishing on all of you 
to start with blue. And fun fact, if you teach a class like this, if people are colorblind, normally they can see blue. I found that out. <laughs> Apple cider vinegar traps, yeah. <laughs> um, so I am going to start off first. Um, if some of you are very, very beginner, I want to talk about, I've got right now, I've got my wet palette down. Um, so I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. And you can see that I don't have a sponge. I have just a piece of paper towel um, because what I do is I end up throwing this out because it's so humid here. Um, and then I have a piece of parchment paper on top of the um, paper towel that's wet. So you guys can kind of see um, that this parchment paper is not soaked. I just lay it on top. And this allows me when I apply the paints, which I'll actually throw the paints down on my palette right now, if you guys wanna follow my lead. And make sure you shake your paints up too. I'm notorious for not shaking my paints and then they come out and they're all separated. Um, so I'm gonna try to keep, I'm also gonna try to keep my palette on screen, but the wet palette allows my paints to not dry up. Um, I don't have this issue as much because it's very humid here, um, but I know that when I've taught this class in places like Illinois or places that don't have as much humidity um, during the year, um, that can play into that with your paints drying up. And so this, what this does is just allows me to extend the life of my paints and it also, you'll see when I'm thinning my paints, how that works. Um, so let's see, and I apologize if I'm kind of like, I'm always all over the place. <laughs> um, I talked about brushes. Let me show you guys brushes again. As I said, I don't, I like the Game Envy brushes right now, but I have Rosemary and Company. I have synthetics. Whatever you're comfortable using um, is kind of what I, you know, what I tell people. Um, so for base coating, something a little bigger here. So I've got like a two or a three. And then when we get down to our details, um, I have a zero. So it has a nice point on it. Um, I actually really enjoy the full, I like the full barrel on these a lot because it allows me to, it, it holds a bit of paint, which for layering, which uh, the layering, you know, is applying the, the paint in thin layers to achieve a smooth transition. I should have said that first. And I also didn't introduce myself, see? <laughs> um, but you're all here, you all probably know, I'm Elizabeth Beckley, I paint miniatures uh, professionally sometimes. <laughs> um, but yes, so brush sizes. Um, uh, I also have here, I've got, this is super handy. I like these a lot. So um, Matt Sexwish and Ben Comets designed these. And normally if I'm teaching a class in person, um, oh, do I have a studio website? So I have a Patreon and actually here, I'll put my little, I have Miniature Monthly and it's Aaron Lovejoy and Matt DiPietro. Um, if you go in my chat afterwards on Discord, you can find all the links for that. I also have an Instagram and I'm on Facebook. Um, so if that's helpful um, and it's just patreon.com slash miniature monthly if you guys want to find me. Um, and then my Instagram is all a lot of my paint work. Um, so sorry. Uh, so I've got these really awesome uh, cards. And what you can do is I'll show you guys as we go um, the amount of paint. And so normally with my layer, which they have here layer, um, I'm going to try to get that amount of coverage. So this is something that helps you with your coverage. And I also have it in blue. It's like I planned this. <laughs> um, so as I go, I'm gonna just in here. Um, so as I'm kind of adjusting, I have this really awesome document camera and I wanna show you guys, I wanna get a little closer to my paint. Um, okay, so uh, also a couple of things to keep in mind that I have found that are very helpful. I mentioned where you live will affect um, 
what how your um <laughs> Uh, where to get the coverage. So I think they still make these. Um, so I, I can look it up. I can drop a link or I can ask Ben or Matt afterwards and I can drop a link in my chat afterwards. Um, okay, so depending on where you live um, will affect the paint and how the paint applies. So I feel like even though this is a beginner class, that is something to keep in mind. Um, I have days here since I live in Atlanta, Georgia. It's so humid. It's, it, it gets humid and cold um, where my paint just doesn't want to dry. And earlier when we were, you know, waiting for the class to start, somebody mentioned a hairdryer. Hairdryer is 100% your friend when you have moments like that. Um, when I'm going to be painting the model, I'm going to show you how I kind of avoid a hairdryer with layering because the biggest thing I hear people talk about with layering is that um, it, it, it takes too long, right? Which I think is, um, I think is, uh, you know, I think is a little bit of a fallacy. I, and, and that it, it, not that it takes too long to dry, but also that you, you can't paint fast with this method. Um, I've participated in a couple aces of painting, so that proves that wrong too. <laughs> um, you'll also see when I start painting that what, what I do is I do, I've learned from other people. So I've learned from Aaron and I've learned from people like Ben Comets. Um, they're different techniques. So you will see when I paint that it's not just, <laughs> just layering. Um, I might do some wet blending. I might do some feathering or some, um, or some pulling of the paint away from the, from the main part I put down on the miniature. Um, but uh, basically I stick to layering. Okay, so what I want you guys to do uh, before we get started, I'm going to give you like 15, 20 minutes, um, and I'm going to keep talking at you, um, is I've got a lot of my model already prepped, uh, but what I want you to do is apply a base coat. I'm going to make sure that this focus is the right way. Um, so you can see that I've got my base coat here for her skin is this darkest color, the Gotha, or I can't pronounce anything, your Gotha red. And then this is the Readerlic blue. Um, and so I've got them down on my palette here like this. But I want to talk a little bit as you're base coating. The base coat is a lot thicker. So let me show you that first. And what you want, you can see actually see um, some of the primer through the model, but this is a really thick. So I've got quite a bit of paint in the brush, which is not what we want for, um, not what we want for the layering. But when we start out with a base coat, we're just going to throw down that color. Um, and if you guys don't get everything base coated, it's okay if you don't get everything painted while we're in class. Uh, the other big thing I stress when I teach this class is um, that it's a beginner level class. So I don't want anybody to feel pr pressured or frustrated um, or, or get really upset when we're working. Um, just try your best. You, you know, you're here to just learn the technique. So it's not like you have to come out of this class being amazing at, at your layering. Um, it's to get you started and to give you some ideas. So I'm throwing down a base coat and you guys are probably throwing down base coats too. Sounds like some kind of like wrestling WWE term. And I'm just gonna do this real quick because I also have another miniature. Get off, fruit flies. I'm going to be like known as like the the trashed garbage artist it, even though Aaron's the one that does uh he's the one that does the trash can class the garbage the dumpster class okay so I'm not going too crazy here but base coat normally with the reaper paint and it doesn't want to hit there we go um focus there so 
it will dry. And if you can see the primer through it, then you probably want to have another um, another uh, layer of your base coat there so you can't see the primer through it. Um, all right, so as you guys are doing that, I wanna talk a little bit about my paint process um, and tell you why I start with my darkest to my lightest. Um, this goes a little bit above and beyond layering, but I feel that it's helpful for this class as we are um, going here. So you can see what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I start with my darkest colors. A lot of times I will come back in and put down an even darker color in my shadows. But for this, I simply, you know, I wanna simplify it. Um, and when I'm mixing up to my color, I don't do this, but I encourage all of you to do this as you get started, is to kind of make an in-between color too. You'll see how I'll paint as I go. Um, to give you an idea. And actually, this is a little different from in-person classes because you don't necessarily see me painting all the time. Um, so this is nice. So if you guys want to make an in-between color too, as we're working our way up, um, please feel free to do that for both of them. We kind of just mix between the two here. And this is where with the base coat where the hair dryer comes in handy um, to get those base coats down. Um, let's see what I'm, where am I on time? Okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm gonna flip here. Okay, so I know that you guys are base coating, but I want to grab your attention for just a minute here as you get your base coats down. Um, and again, if you just base coat a section or two, you don't have to get everything base coated. Um, it's not an issue just getting a couple areas there. And then if you have time and you catch up. Um, all right, so I want to talk about the layering and, oh, I have a question in my Q&A chat. One second. Oh, can I show the model again? Yeah, of course, actually, let me, I have a model here. I'll just put it in my palette. So does that, is that helpful, I'm guessing? Yes. This is the one I've worked on that's my model for the class, but also the base coat. So the cloak and then her skin tones. And I actually accidentally painted, when I was doing this, I accidentally painted her leg here. It's her leg, it's not part of the cloak, but it's it's really okay. But I painted, I went back and fixed it. <laughs> oh. All right. So with um, when you're going to pull your paints and the amount of paint that you want to use, this is the part that's important with the layering technique. You're not going to have as much paint as you would have in your brush for base coating because we're not going to want to apply that much paint at that time, um, right? So when we're building up our layers, we don't want to just do what we did with the base coat. Um, so what I do and what I tell people to do is when you're starting out, I tend to pull a little bit away from the palette. So this is how I load my brush. And I think this is important for people. Um, the other thing that you're going to think about is really I'm only loading the first um, maybe one fourth of the brush here or not even up to half. You can see where it kind of gets wet, where it's got some water in here. Uh, is That's the amount of paint, but it's mostly just in that, that little one fourth of the brush here. Um, another thing to think about is I'm not adding any water to my paint. So this with the Reaper miniatures paint, um, 
is what I mainly use when I'm working um, is right out of the bottle. I don't really water it down. The, the exception and the it depends part of that is the amount of water in my brush. So when I go to wash my brush off, as you can hear, you can probably hear me wash my brush off. I actually, I normally take it and um, run it across my fingers and you can see some of that moisture come out of the brush or I'll wipe it on my pants or on my chair because I can't have nice things because they're always covered in paint. Um, so with that, there your brush is wet, but your brush isn't just sopping with water, if that makes sense too. So that's another part of thinking about the layering process. So I don't have a ton of water in the brush, if, if any. Um, and that's kind of the idea with the layering too, is when I'm pulling out this paint. And again, it's only into the first part of the brush here. And then I want to show you, I normally walk around and show everybody um, how much paint is actually in my brush. So I use my finger for this and then I'll move on to my little. So there's really, I'm running, I've run out of paint, right? So again, and I'll do it with the blue this time. So there's very, there's very little paint in my brush. And now I'm a Technicolor tiger. Um, so <laughs> there's, there's very little paint in the brush. I run out of paint very quickly. Um, and that is something that when I teach this class, I see that the people are struggling with the most. So that's something that I really emphasize to keep in mind is it's you're, you're not loading your brush with paint. To, to, to remind them of that. And then I'll show you on this handy dandy little card here. And it might be light, it might be a little bit, it might not be as dark here. Oh, and then these are meant that you can, re you can erase them so I can wipe this off. So that's why that wanted to wipe off. But that's why I like these. These are kind of, these allow you to figure out your layers um, for when you're beginning. So you know how much paint you have in your brush. I do feel that it becomes one of those things where you just, you learn. Um, another really useful thing as we're working here is <laughs> holding your model fairly close to your face so you can see what the paint is doing on the miniature. I mean, I know that we're painting miniatures so we have to do that anyway, but that's another thing to start thinking about as you're um, as you're working. So you, it, it's just a way to learn your paint. All right. So I'm going to zoom in. And I said I was going to start with the blue. So let me see if I can get that. So you guys can watch me pull that color. Maybe to, yeah, there we go. It's hard because it's mirrored on my screen. I'm actually going to zoom out just a little bit. Sorry, technical things here. Okay, so if you have your base coat, um, we're going to start with the blue because I feel like blue is a little bit more forgiving. Um, so I'm gonna go and I'm keeping an eye on my screen. Um, I have an autofocus feature here on my document camera. So if it goes fuzzy for a moment, that's why. So it should fix itself. There we go. Um, so I don't have a good base coat like all of you might have. Uh, shame on me for being the teacher, but not uh, going by my own, <laughs> going by what I'm doing. Um, okay, so as we start and as we start building our layers, what's going to happen is when we're at this point where we're slowly starting to add and work up to this color, what's going to happen is it's going to feel 
very easy to get that transition when we're still in the dark, when we're still working on the dark colors here. Um, when it's the darker colors, they, they tend to look, they, they're blending a lot better. Um, and then as we push towards this uh, highlight color essentially here, uh, you're going to start to see your transitions. So I don't want anybody to get discouraged. Um, I'm going to cover a couple of things of how I try to um, fix those blends too, if your blends are, are not as great. Um, and another thing to stress here is that the more layers you apply, um, the smoother your transition is going to be. One second, let me grab some water. <clears throat> All right. So the other thing is when I get started is what I'm going to do is um, work in smaller and smaller areas as I'm working up to my highlight. So you'll see that I'm going to cover most of the model with those first couple of layers. And then as I go, I'm going to work up just as if I'm thinking about my highlight in real life. Um, thinking about your, your highlights and your shadows and the contrast there that those create. Um, and so working into those smaller and smaller areas. So I'm always, as I work up to this color, I'm always working into a smaller and smaller area. So that's something that you guys can keep in mind as we're working here. Uh, Henry asked, is the base coat one color at this point? Yes. Um, so the base coat is just this, uh, just the Readerlic blue. So mine doesn't look like it is because I didn't, where's my other figure? So with this, you can see it's a better base on this one that I've done a little bit more work on for my miniature. It's a little bit of a better base coat. Um, it's just the primer showing through. Um, and that's, that's my issue here, is that I did what I told you guys not to. I didn't throw another base coat on there. Uh, and Timothy asks, uh, he missed out on what you mixed into the paint, whether it was a water or a medium. Oh, okay. So I don't, it would be water. Um, it's just the water out of my brush cup, brush cup, if I can talk. Um, and it's not a lot of water, so I really am not adding water directly to the paint here on my palette. It's just the water that I have in my brush, um, if that answers, the, answers your question, Timothy. So it's I, I, it's, I can't tell people I'm using water, but I am. I have to keep that in. <laughs> I have to think about these things. All right, so as I go, I want to make sure I'm in focus. And actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to my cheap synthetic brush. And like that, if you saw that there, there's a little bit too much water in my brush. So I'll just take my brush and kind of um, to try to dry it out a little bit because what was happening is you could see that paint instead of staying where I put it, it comes, it kind of comes back in on itself. And that is where I would make a wash and not a thin layer of paint because the whole idea is to have a thin layer. So for these first couple of layers, you're going to apply almost everywhere besides and maybe some of your darker in some of the dark areas here where you wouldn't technically have shadows. And it's not going to look like much in the first couple of layers. Um, it's going to, it's not going to look good. You're going to think it's ugly. A lot of times you have to keep applying the, the layers of paint. Um, the other thing that I tell everybody when I'm painting, and this is regardless of the of the technique I'm using um, is is um, you're always going to have a give and a take with painting your miniatures. So if I go too far on going up to this 
this lighter color here, this um, grindy low blue, I'm just simply going to come back in with another layer of my darker color here and reapply to the shadows. And that's the great thing, I think, with layering with this thin layer of paint, is it actually gives you the ability to co come back in and make corrections without messing your whole paint job up um, because it's so thin. Uh, the other thing it's going to do, which I really like, um, is if you see on my example miniature, um, it's going to allow me to, oh, don't paint her blue. <laughs> it's going to allow with the thin layers of paint some of those colors to come through underneath um, if it will focus. So you're going to get some of those nice subtle colors because we're building up our layers here. So it allows for that with layering as well. Uh, we had someone in the Q&A, they asked, how do you know what color to mix uh, with to make lighter layers? Um, so that's a little bit of, that's a little bit of like color theory, um, uh, color choice. Um, so I simply, this, I, I think this will answer the question. Um, I think that, you know, I chose a darker color and then this lighter color. So I'm working up to this lighter color. But I could just as well, um, for, for the class, I could just as well come over here and pick out, you know, I have another Reaper color. I have this Glacier Blue. So it's just seeing the transition. So you go, this is the darker color, and up to the lighter color. Um, Reaper does something really awesome where they do the Reaper triads that I love those. Um, those are extremely, I think those are stream, extremely helpful for people. And it basically lays out like your rosy skin, your rosy skin, your rosy skin shadow, rosy skin, and rosy skin highlight. So I think that if you're first starting out, that's a really good way um, to figure out your uh, sh uh, shadows and highlights. So my brush is still, sometimes it's still a little too wet here, but again, I'm just going in and putting down my first, my layers of paint, and that's a little too much, so I'll come in. It's a little too, too light. Like if I think that this transition is too harsh here. And I'll come and I'll blend the two. So that's a little bit of those thin layers with painting, but also wet blending because my environment does allow me uh, to wet blend. You can see how long my paint is staying uh, is staying wet here. Um, and so as we're going and as we're working on this piece, that's something that I wanted to talk about and how you can avoid the use of a hair dryer unless you're really dead set on painting the hood of her cloak. So as I'm going around, I'm going to paint a layer here, and then I'm going to move on to this other part of the model, and I'm going to keep moving around the model. And by the time I get down to here, this up here will probably be dry, unless it's a really bad day for painting, um, where it's, you know, it's really humid and nothing wants to dry. Um, the same can be said if you're working on a big enough space if I have the cloak here, I can switch from one side to the other. I do that a lot with uh, painting faces. So again, it's how many layers do you, do you want to be applying to achieve that smooth transition? I'm um, gonna turn up my brightness here so you guys can kind of see so the more layers, the smoother my transition is going to be. Um, if you find it's frustrating, start with just a handful of layers to try to get um, the, the push of the contrast there, push up to the highlights. Um, also, 
uh, uh, the question I get asked a lot is um, at what point, you know, how many layers do you use um, with competition pieces? It's not necessarily me thinking about my layers. If this will, this might, there we go. It's not necessarily thinking about how many layers, it's the time I spend. So if I have a competition piece and I'm painting, uh, I'm sitting painting a face for several hours um, to give you an idea of how much time I'm investing or how many layers of paint I'm trying to apply there to get those smooth transitions and those realistic transitions. Um, oh yeah, okay, good. So you guys, the uh, using the bright fe bright feature on my document camera helped. I apologize. I do have five lights on right now. Oh no, I have one of my lights off. Uh, Linda just asked in the Q and A. So she said, "Sorry, I just finished the partial base coat. Is each layer a smaller area than the last?" Yes. Um, so each layer is a smaller layer, uh, smaller area than a, than the last. So you're going to see I'm going to apply kind of this. Oh, I'm sorry, I was off camera with my paints. Um, I'm going to kind of go to here with this almost middle color. It's a little darker. I've added a little bit more of my um, Grindylow blue into this blue, and I'm working towards my Grindylow blue. But this color here the slightly lighter than the reader like blue is going to be applied almost all over. Um, and if you can see, I'm applying almost everywhere. So if we're going with the back of the cloak, I'm going almost everywhere, but the, um, that deep shadow here. Oh, the other thing, I always, there's always so much to cover. Okay, so the other thing when you guys are layering and when you guys are placing that paintbrush on the miniature, it is important to think about where you're going to place that miniature first. Um, so the paintbrush, when it's loaded with paint, um, you're going to want to think about that in the way of, okay, I've got a, like right here, I've got a lot of paint on my brush. Where do I want to deposit the most paint? So where am I going to be if I'm working up into a smaller and smaller area? I normally want to start somewhere where I'm going to be working up to my highlights. So I start like this and I bring the brush down. And by the time you've worked down to your shadow here, you've run out of paint. So you're almost naturally kind of giving it that transition by also running out of paint. So that's something else to think about too, is your brush placement is important. So I'm really, I, I apologize, I've been talking and I realize I haven't been painting as much. So I'm gonna paint for a second here. Normally I have my miniature on a hobby holder and I don't drop it in my palette for those reasons. Um, normally I have my miniature on a hobby holder to not, uh, you can see I'm rubbing some of the paint away. So to not do that, but I didn't want the hobby holder to get in the way of being able to see what I was doing. I don't know why that's not wanting to focus right on the... Sorry guys, technical difficulties here with my document camera. Not wanting to focus. Okay, so you can see right there on the hood of the miniature, 
I've started, I've gone to a slightly brighter color. So you can see this is just, I'm just kind of going with more of a tabletop quality to my blending. You can still see a little bit of my blending here. And if sometimes if I zoom in, it might lose the quality, but you still, you might be able to see it just a little bit better. I just know you can't see my palette at that point. Um, but you can see it's not 100% smooth, but it still looks good. And then if I just focus here, you can also see with my with the brush strokes I'm making, you can also see that I also go and I, I tap a little bit. I'm kind of, this is what I was talking about when you're looking at your miniature and you're looking at how the paint is applying to that miniature. Um, if you need an optimizer, an optimizer is really helpful here too. Um, so you can see kind of where your paint is going on that small level. And now I've got, I'm working up even more. So I, I almost, I, I use the side of my brush. To, to apply the paint. Um, okay, so here, I do like when I get this. Um, you can see right in this area, this is something that happens with layering. You can kind of see this divot in the paint. Um, and one second, let me finish my thoughts and then I'll answer your um, questions, Wolfgang, in the chat there. Um, so you can see that I what's happened is the paint is pulled away from underneath. It's not as it's not as obvious now um, when it's dried, but you can still I can see it a little bit. So I've got this little hole in that layer of paint, and that happens when you're applying a layer of paint over the layer before it that hasn't dried. It almost, it tears the paint. Um, and that's why it's important to let each layer dry so you don't have the paint underneath moving around and creating this issue. If you do have that happen, you're gonna come in here and I just try to simply fill that paint hole there that little like tear in my paint I just focus on it because otherwise it will build up okay so I've got some questions here let me answer some questions <laughs> oh yes there are five lights yes uh, I do use every light while I paint um, so my painting space I have my desk and um, the other thing I do with my lighting is I balance it out based on color. Um, I kind of like to do that. So I've got some blue lights and I've got, I've got more blue spectrum lights and more um, yellow spectrum lights. So I have two ot lights and then a couple of different bulbs here. Um, and, that, and I've got two that are on arms that are behind my shoulders a little bit. So it gets rid of the shadows um, while I'm painting. And then um, I've got a couple over my desk. Let's see. Uh, should you generally use a very lighter shade of your base color? Um, so I use a um, I use a darker shade if that's what you're asking. I start with my darkest colors and work my way up to my highlights. Um, if that is is what you're asking, I hope that answers the question. Um, I just do that because it's. Um, white as your highlight. Oh, so it's not usually white as my highlight. Those are my final highlights for things. With this basic uh, class, I um, simply, I'm highlighting up to the Grindy Low Blue. I actually, instead of white, you might use something like Golden Blonde. Um, I rarely do pure white, because if you mix pure white with things, it will desaturate your colors. So I try to um, move away from the desaturating of my colors, unless I'm using white as my very final highlight, uh, if that answers the questions. And then let me go over to my, let's see. Uh, primer for metal miniatures. 
So primer for metal miniatures, uh, I just use the, I actually use Steinal Res. Reaper also has their own brush on primer that I've used before. I use that for metal as well as the, the bones black and the resin. Um, I use the, I just use a brush on primer because it's too humid here to use any kind of canned primer. Um, are you just adding more of the Grindy Low with each layer? Yes. So I am simply, sorry if I did not say that to, to everybody. Um, I am working, just working up to my, um, whoop, I've got to move that over so I can see my, no, oh! okay, I am just working up to Grindy Low. Um, I, just so you don't have to struggle, you're just moving from one color to the next to learn your layering. So you can kind of see I'm focusing and it's I'm always back and forth so I've got some of this blue so if I want to make this where it transitions a little better I might go back and add a little bit of that darker color if I don't like this transition so it's all about kind of that give and that take so if I want to bring it back down And sometimes, so if I go in here, this isn't, I'm going to add to my base coat here because it didn't go as dark as I want it to. So that was just, I was just throwing in some blue. So now that I've gone, so this is kind of talking about applying uh, your highlights and thinking about your colors. So now that I've gone about halfway between my Reader Lick and my Grindy Low color here, um, not that, I can mess up my paint job that way. Um, so this color that I've applied, the in-between color, I won't take this color up any further. I will take it up further here. So that's also thinking about smaller and smaller layers, but also thinking about, you know, how your shadows are cast. And I'm working, I'm, I'm being a little, I'm trying to work a little fast so you guys can get an idea. And then I will move on to the red. I didn't start everybody off with the red because the red is a little bit, it's a little bit harder. Um, it's a little bit more frustrating, but I think that you guys can, I think that you guys can do this challenge of, of red. I know people don't like red as much. But red's not as tricky as everyone thinks it is. Okay, so the other thing that you're probably noticing is that the more layers you apply, so if you're working towards that Grindy Low color, um, what it's going to do is it's definitely going to, you're going to get more and more of that color and it's be, go, the color is going to become more and more saturated. Um, the other thing to think about, and I don't know, I, I mean, if you've been painting, you probably realize this, that the paint color that you put down is going to dry a lot darker than, um, than what you you had it there when it was when it was wet. Um, so the paint colors do dry a little bit darker. That is something to keep in mind. So again, you know, I'm working around. I didn't necessarily go and apply, you know, a single layer to everything. I kind of, I, the way I like to paint 
is I like to paint, um, you know, in, in sections. So a lot of times when I'm painting a miniature, I like to start with the skin tone. So I like to start with my face first. Um, and then, you know, start with the face and then go on to the rest of the body. And then I'll kind of go from skin outwards. So then I would paint the cloak, but we started with the cloak first because I, I just, you know, I wanted to start with blue. Um, I guess we could have made her a blue orc, but I like the idea of the, the kind of the red orc there because uh, she's an orc lady. Um, but, so that's why I'm doing it this way, just, so just explaining kind of my process for you. Okay, so say that you have a really harsh line like I do right here on the side. Um, there is a way that you can, you know, you can just come back over with a color between these two. And this is why I like layering as well, is you just come over and you kind of just apply that in-between color to that harsh line. And you s try to smooth out that harsh line. So let me move up a little bit here. So this is another way, if you feel like it's just, you can see your transitions. And you just wanna go in and kind of correct that. Um, the other thing with layering is you are going to learn how much paint you want in your brush. That is, that is just something I think that comes with time is knowing how much paint for the area that you're painting. Um, as you could see, I don't, I know I'm a little out of focus here with my palette, um, but as you could see, I picked up a little bit more paint just because I know how much paint I need to, um, you know, cover the area that I'm painting. And I'm rubbing all the paint off this miniature as I go. All right, so I'm going to focus here on, oh, see, look, this is why you have a hobby holder. That's okay, we can fix it. That's always when I'm, when I'm doing my video, my Patreon videos, I always tell people it's okay, we can, we can go back and fix this. Acrylic paint is pretty forgiving. So I'm going to focus on, let's see, what do I have? I'm going to focus on the back of her cloak here and work up to my brightest highlight for you guys in the couple of minutes that we have um, with the cloak. And then I'm going to move on to the skin tones and kind of, do, I'm doing the same thing with my layering, but this time, you know, we're doing it with a different color. I'm actually going to swap to my smaller brush here. Um, so this is a Game Envy, this is a zero. So I'm going to work all the way up here for you. So you can see by switching to my other brush why I did that, because it allows me, obviously, I don't have as much paint, and it allows me to control. Again, it's all about controlling where that brush, where you're applying that paint. And if I do, if I get the, if the paint wants to break apart. I just go in and I fix it the way I showed you. Okay, and so here again, you know, if I've, if you can definitely see, you can see my transition here. So if I were to let that dry, 
normally I'd catch it. So that's where like I'm doing, um, I'm doing that wet blending. Normally I'd catch it and kind of go in, but you can smooth that out. And then one second, I see that I have some questions. All right, let me grab Charlie. No snorting. Okay, let's see. Any tips for painting like the black folds of a, ca a cape? I find it harder than colors. Okay, so black, black and white, a, even more of a bane of your existence than red. Um, so here's the trick. Don't actually paint black or white. And what I mean by that, and actually this is really great um, for these questions. I can just pause really quick since we're on schedule. Um, I can pause my painting and I've got all my paints right here in front of me. So that's really exciting. Okay, so if I were to do a black paint, um, I would probably go and grab something that's really dark, but it's not necessarily black. And my reasoning is, is that my black is a, it's a desaturated color. So when you, you know, go up with the black, if you want your, de your colors desaturated, um, you you would do you could use black but a lot of times i tend to use just a darker color like nightshade purple nightshade purple nightmare black um we got this crack in ink which is super awesome and then what i would do is i would try to highlight up um with something like you know we got this awesome brin uh brin wind brin wind brine wind brown wow i cannot talk um, brine wind brown. So what I would do is I wouldn't come up all the way with this color or I would call, I would come up with into a smaller and smaller layer. So if this was black, I just wouldn't push my highlight as much to, to get that to appear as black, if that makes sense. Um, we're going to do that with the red when we paint. So I'm going to kind of show you glazing over colors to reestablish that red color when we get to our red. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, and you guys, if everybody, you know, like if you want to drop questions in my chat afterwards, that would be awesome. And I think I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a table. And if people want to come in and talk with me and we can all have the video, the video chat going, um, we can do, I will do that afterwards directly after my class. Okay. Do you layer, Joe asks, do you layer differently if you're starting with a zenithal priming? Um, so the zenithal priming, I only use it for object source lighting and I use it in the, in the way that I was talking to you guys about like being able to see the colors through. Um, so I guess the answer to that would be it depends on what you're painting. It depends. So if you're painting, for me, if I'm painting object source lighting, then I definitely take into account the zenithal priming and my base coats might be thinner. Like I might only do one base coat because I want to have maybe some of that undercoat show through. Um, but for the most part, that's what I'm doing when I'm applying my darkest color is I'm then allowing my, my uh, layers, um, afterwards to show through to that darkest color right to achieve those transitions. Um, let's see. Do you find yourself using a lighter stroke as you go to the lighter shades and covering less of an area? Yes. So yes, um, that's why, you know, I switched to, um, let me, so a light, I guess a lighter stroke, um, I guess it's, it's less paint. So when I'm going to that brightest color, so when I'm going up to my Grindy Low Blue, so here on my brush, I have my Grindy Low Blue. And it's, yeah, it's, I've got less paint in my brush. And then I might even have to apply it several times. So I might even have to load my brush several times. So for those final highlights, if you're thinking about bringing up your highlights, smaller and smaller areas, 
And like I'll come over to her, her hood here of her cape. So smaller and smaller areas and way less paint on my brush. And that's why I, I switch to the smaller brush. Um, for those of you that want to, uh, so it's five, it, it's not five, it's four o'clock Eastern time, but it's five o'clock for me. Um, so we're at the halfway point with the class. Um, for those of you that would like to, um, uh, if you're done with your blue, um, what you can do is we'll move on and put down a base coat of the, um, I'm going to slaughter this name again, which is fitting because it's red. Uh, your Gothothoa red <laughs> um, onto the parts for the skin tone. And if you just want to focus on base coating, you know, her main body here, and then later you can do her arms and the back of her legs. I'm mainly going to be focusing on this part of her body and a little bit of her face, but not much because it's so tiny. But I'm mainly going to be starting with here. And actually, while you are all doing that, I am going to, my base coats weren't all that great, so I'm going to throw down another base coat here too for some of my spaces. So then we can, we're all painting together. <laughs> yeah, but I'm still going to, I'm still going to but butcher it. Er, er, go, 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 so red, er, 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 go, so. So, uh, yeah, see, <laughs> I'm just, Aaron butchers them too, so I don't feel so bad. Aaron Lovejoy butchers the names. So if he does it, I can do it too, right? That's how that works. Especially when I'm, when I'm here and I'm, I'm live on my, I can't, I, it's not like the videos I have where we can go back and I can do another take. And I can go, nope, 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 nope. I got to reshoot it again. <laughs> yeah, so so this is where the the um, the paintbrush comes in, or not paintbrush, the hairdryer comes in handy. Goodness, I, I cannot talk. And while you guys are getting that base coat on, I'm going to go just do a couple more layers here. See, the beauty of the internet is uh, nobody knows if the back of your mini is painted or not if you don't take a picture of the back of your miniature. So, fun fact, it's like Schrodinger's cat. Is the cat dead or is the cat alive? Is the back of the miniature painted or isn't it? I, I don't know. No one will know if you don't take a picture. And now everybody's wondering how many of my miniatures aren't actually painted on the back of the miniatures. So there, I'm just kind of giving you guys a, for those of you that might have finished base coating, just giving you guys a little bit more of that blue there, bringing up that blue. And a couple areas. All right. So I think she's dry. All right. So we're going to start on the red skin. So more layering practice here. 
Let me drink some water. Oh, that's really neat. Laura in the in the chat says to help with drying, Costco has an LED desk lamp with a fan built in. That's really neat. All right. So same idea for the red here. is that we're going to be moving from our base coat. And actually you can see this dried a little bit. Um, and if that happens, this is the part where you might add a little bit of water to reinvigorate that paint. But not too much, because yeah, again, I don't want to wash. Okay, so let me make sure Zoe, stop. Don't eat your feet. Sorry, my dog is eating her feet. All right. So what we're going to do is, again, the same idea with the cloak, is that you're going to be working up into a smaller and smaller area. So I'll throw down my first couple of layers. Will be a, a lot of the, excuse me, a lot of the skin. So as we go, and again, thinking about where you're placing that brush when that brush has all that paint in it. And I jumped up there really quick, I apologize. Um, with, my, with my model I was painting, I actually left a lot of this in shadow. I came down a little bit here on her leg. And this is the other thing. Um, so thinking about if you're, as you're working, uh, this model has a lot of muscles. So as you're working, um, you can apply, if you think that the muscles stand out too much, you can simply go back in with one of those thin layers of paint and correct that. And it makes it really nice to be able to correct it. So again, you can see I'm applying this color. And then if I feel like it's too much, I'll come back in. Oh, the slightly darker color here. So it's all about that give and the take of your paints. And you know what, for this class, I'm gonna focus, since her face is so tiny, I'm gonna focus on her, um, on her midsection here and on our legs, just so everybody can see it a little better. If you do want to kind of tackle the face, normally where I focus my colors here are here on her forehead, on her cheekbone here, under her eye, on her nose, and then on her chin here, and then kind of going back a little bit. Um, so the other thing to think about as we're working with our layers, the smaller your areas, I've kind of focused on the larger areas of a 28 millimeter model. The, um, oh, the, um, the smaller the areas are, the less you're going to have to really push to get that transition of that blending. So I'm talking about here, like with her face, you don't have to, it doesn't take much. So you're not going to have a big area to blend. I find if you're getting frustrated to maybe try and tackle an area that's a little smaller, I find that's easier for me because you don't have to, you don't feel like you're struggling with those large areas to transition. And again, 
So if I feel like here, I'm going to go and add in because I feel it's too harsh. Just got some under cleavage going on under here. And I'm just quiet because now I'm showing you more. I'm kind of, this is where I'm working all over the model to do those, those first um, layers. Some kind of, we didn't do that with the cloak as much. I focused on areas there. But here, I'm trying to target a little bit more. Um, and so this is the other thing, you know, we talked about the base, with the base coat, if you apply two base coats, um, it will, you, it, you can't see the primer underneath. Um, so this is something to think about as you're doing the layering. Um, you might want to, this middle color I have right here, you might want to go and throw that color down again to build that mid-tone color up if you can see too much of the dark through it. So this is another thought behind the layering is the more layers, the more layers you're going to add, the less um, transparent it's going to become. And that's the big thing I think that I'm working with here too with layering is the, the transparency between the paints showing the colors underneath through. So you can see how quickly for those smaller areas there. No, grab her face here. This model was a little hard when I painted my class model um, beforehand. She's got these big teeth on her face, so it kind of gets in the way. Because normally with faces, you come down here and you'll kind of blend this area. And then this area here in the back of her face will have a little bit more of a shadow. But the sculpt, she's very, she's got a very kind of orcish face, the sculpt there. It's pretty deep. It was a little hard to get it to fix for me. So really, if you just want to focus on jumping up with those transitions into a smaller and smaller area, in those places that I talked about, Okay, let me build up some transition on the leg here. And I want to show you guys a little bit of, like I was talking about before, answering the question about black. If you're trying to maintain these colors, or you say I want this to appear more red instead of more kind of that um, peach or kind of pinky color, What I'm going to do is first I'm going to smooth out my transitions. <laughs> it's not cooperating on her leg, but if you feel like you push it too much, especially with colors like red, because red is such a pain to make it stay like it's looking red. What I do is I have a little bit more, it's, it's almost like a wash. I don't, I just think it's a, a layer that wants to apply a little better. 
again, it's learning your paints and knowing your paints. Um, so I will just take my base color again and I will paint back over a very thin layer. So this is talking, this is kind of thinking about that again, that whole transparency thing and the idea of layers painted back over colors. Um, so it's this back and forth. You can also do this by um, using a glaze, like a matte medium um, or a, like a matte varnish and mixing some of your color in. Um, people do that too. And that's, that's completely fine. There's really no wrong way here. And then if I want to keep kind of working that color, then it appears like it's more red. So again, just an interesting thing to kind of think about when you're layering. Let me make sure I have no questions. Nope, we're good. Let's see, if somebody said, it feels like I'm doing more wet blending on the model itself instead of on my own palette. Okay, so that's, a, that's actually a really good question too. Um, so I'm doing, if you, if you can see as we're going back and forth, I am doing that as well. Um, and I want you to know, Jeffrey, that there's really, you know, I try to tell people there, there's, there are wrong ways to paint, but there's, there's, there's not really. Um, and if you're doing it right and you're getting, you know, if you're getting the results that you want and your paint is nice, it's, it's thinner, it's applying thinly to the model. If you're blending on your model and you feel like it's more wet blending with those thin layers and you're, you enjoy the results you're getting, then you're, you're doing it the way that you want to do it. And that's why at the beginning of the class, I said, you know, you should take as many classes as you can. You should take like classes with Aaron who wet blends or, you know, someone like Ben Comets that uses that loaded brush technique um, or the two brush blending because I take all of those things. And while my main um, technique is layering, I'm also incorporating those, own, those things and making my own and making my paint style that I'm comfortable with and allows me to paint the miniature in the way I want to. Um, let me grab... Um, how do you start to fix areas that look a little chalky? Okay, so that was the same. Um, let me move that question thing back over here. No. Okay, so that idea, and that's why I focused on the red here because it does want to become chalky. So um, what you want to do is I would come back over with that base coat, not base coat, sorry, with that darkest color this red here, and I would simply, that I would do a thin layer back over. So you're kind of establishing that red color again. So it goes over and you'll see that it gets rid of some of that chalkiness. The other reason I found that your paint can become chalky is you're thinning it down too much. So you have a little bit, you might have a little bit too much, a little bit uh, too much water, I apologize talking. Uh, in your brush or when you're thinning down your paints, they're just too thin. Um, this is this would be, you know, right if we were in person, I could kind of help you. I could look at what you're doing. But if it appears, if you have an optimizer, if your eyes are good enough, if you get really close to that model and you can see, a lot of times you can see the paint breaking up. Um, and that's that chalkiness, that's what's happening. So you simply might have too much water thinning your paint too much. Um, let's see, what is the best way to remove too much paint on the face? Um, if it's still wet, uh, I come in, so let me, so if my paint is still wet, like say I did something really terrible here, real quick, you can also sit with a second brush and try to remove some of that paint with a clean brush. If the layer underneath is dry, it shouldn't pick that layer back up. You should be okay. So I've kind of gotten rid of some of that paint that I put down. So if you're able to work fast enough, um, okay, cool, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> 
Um, the other thing is if you do have just too much paint build up on your brush um, or to on your model, excuse me. I mean, sometimes I have to go, I've redone eyes five, 10 times. Yeah. Like as someone who paints miniatures all the time, that still happens. I will, I will take my airbrush needle or old airbrush needle and this sounds terrible, but scrape the paint away from like the eye area and then come back in with maybe a little bit of matte varnish and paint that matte varnish in there. Um, yeah, glaze medium. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm also looking at the chat. Um, but I will go in and simply try to take some of that paint away very carefully. Um, so also Cameron uh, said about the um, the glaze medium. Yeah, the glaze medium will help too. I, I mentioned that if you want to put a little bit of your color into your glaze, uh, you know, you take a glaze medium um, or a matte varnish. Like I actually use, I use Reaper's brush on sealer as a matte medium. Um, so real quick, if I throw that down on my palette here, I'll show you, give you guys an idea. I know it's hard to see because it is clear, but for me, this is my idea of kind of a glaze medium. Everything's flipped backwards. So I'll take some of that and make that thin glaze. And yes, you can also do that. And that takes some of the frustration out of it is you can also apply that to that area. That glaze medium does help too. So that's something else that you can do if you want to fix, um, if it becomes chalky and you want to fix it. So I'm going to focus here on bringing this up real quick. And her stomach area, so you guys can kind of see my given my take between my miniature. Well. How I work back and forth with the colors. So I've gone in right there. And if I feel like it's too much, I go back in with that darker color. And the other thing is, again, a kind of a different technique is pulling that paint outwards working with it. I'm able to do this because I'm working with it while it's still wet. Because my paint, as you have probably picked up on, my paint stays wet here on the miniature for a little bit. So if yours looks okay, so Maria, if yours looks okay from a distance, that's awesome. Um, that was another thing I meant to mention to you guys. Uh, if you're pushing your contrast, if you take if you take your miniature, if you're sitting at your desk right now under your lights, and you take your miniature and hold it, like I have mine on my hobby holder, I hold it straight out and down away from me out of the direct light. And if I can see my transitions, you like my the contrast in the miniature, and I can see a lot of the details in the miniature that way with the painting, um, that that's how I know I'm pushing up to my highlight enough. I think the biggest thing with people that are starting to paint is that kind of that fear of pushing your colors too much. And I think that this helps with that is, you know, holding the model away from you and saying, okay, I have to, I have to push up that contrast more, right? Um, and don't be afraid to push your highlights more because you can always come back in as you've seen me doing with my darker paints and painting back over if I feel like I've gone too much. If I feel like I've just like overexposed with my paint, <laughs> like a photography term there. Um, So the other thing I'm doing is because I don't have much paint in my brush, when I do run out of paint, it gives me the ability to play with that paint that's down on the model without putting more paint anywhere else. So 
So I can kind of, when somebody mentioned like they were wet blending, they felt like they were wet blending on their model. I mean, absolutely. You know, that's just that there's no, there's no wrong way here as we're applying the paint, unless you're applying, I guess, too much paint. There are wrong ways. I, I say that and but I just want everybody to be encouraged to paint. I don't want anybody to be discouraged here. So again, you can see that even though I'm applying those really thin layers and I'm trying to fix it here, I'm like squinting down at my model. <laughs> you can see I've still got some of that, I've still got some of that muscle definition because I've got that darker color, you know, kind of coming through there. So again, if I feel like I haven't achieved those transitions, I'll just come in on the very edges, right? And kind of work with that to blend that a little bit more. And I'm not letting my paint dry, I'm, I'm, I'm being bad. So yeah, so you guys can see, like, it's not, I'm not sticking to just some rigid, um, I have to work up in smaller and smaller areas because it is that given that take where I'm going back and forth and making sure that it's not too dark, I, you know, and like here with her arm, with the muscles, the muscles aren't too dark. And I think that that allows you to be able to see that. So if I feel like this line is, is too dark there, I'll just come back in, bring that up. Highlight just there on top of the arm. I realize I'm resting my hands on my wet palette, so it was slowly moving back. I apologize. So, and like here, see, I feel like this is all too harsh in here. So I'll come in, even that out a little bit. Um, so since, since we've kind of been working on layering, um, just another thing to mention is thinking about when you're building up your, when you're building up to your highlights and, and painting miniatures and models is to think about things in kind of basic shapes. Um, so, you know, if I'm thinking about high, highlight placement, 
Um, here, this is kind of, you know, like a, like a, a cylindrical like rod shape. So where would the highlight fall on that? And so I'm kind of focusing, bringing up my highlight right here. And also knowing where highlight placement and muscle placement is in anatomy. Um, so looking at anatomy books and things like that. I always tell people to use references. But thinking about those basic shapes and how I would highlight those basic shapes. Um, you know, again, like the, the tip of her chin. because it's rounded. So focusing more on those, you know, on the rounded spaces, thinking of them as basic shapes and highlighting them that way. And the thing I always end up doing is um, making that too harsh of a shadow here. So I'll come back in with a midtone again, just a really thin layer. And I'm just making that so it's not so dark. And this is, you know, like I said, the number of transitions, the number of layers. You can see how quickly I brought up those highlights uh, in that very small area. So when I'm painting the face, you can see how quickly I brought the highlighting on the face. You don't need, like, and if, oh, her, I think her face, I think her nose is a little bit too much. Okay, well, I'm going to come back in here and just bring that back down. And then again, I'm almost all the way to my highest, my brightest color here. So very small areas. And I'm just, I'm just doing it right in this area here. And sometimes, so we're only going between the two colors. Um, and so sometimes, you know, I would come, since I'm only using these two colors, I would push this more if this was skin tones. Um, so I would probably push this more. I would use, I've got my golden blonde. I really like that as a highlight color. Um, and then with my last color, I'd probably go with like, um, with a white. I normally use an artist color white because it has more pigment. Um, so that's something that's helpful. And then let me make sure. Okay, so I'm sure you guys are probably still painting. Um, if you, we've got about 30 minutes left and I can keep painting too, but I want to kind of open it up. So if anybody has any questions since we've covered layering if you have any other questions, I mean, I can kind of derail off topic of layering and talk about painting. If you have some questions like that, um, just drop them in the chat and I'll, oh, I'll leave this for you guys so you can see it. And then I'll keep painting as well. But if you have any other questions, um, again, don't don't hesitate to to ask as I'm painting here. Oh, 
Okay. What is the difference between a glaze, a wash, a paint, and an ink? And I will answer this to the best of my ability. I know some people are better at answering this than I am. Okay, so a glaze for me um, is what you saw where we did, we kind of, we took that medium that's not as thin as water and we used that medium to mix some of the um, paint with the, the matte medium. And then I applied it over the model. And the thing that the glaze does that the wash doesn't is the glaze sits on top of the surface. So when I'm applying it, just like I would apply a thin layer of paint, um, it's going to sit on top of the surface here and co uh, cover the surface of the model. Um, then if you have a wash, which I'll show you guys on camera real quick. So I take some uh, water on my brush and I dilute the paint. This is how I make a wash. So if I'm doing that, that paint, see how it kind of comes back in on itself when I move my brush away? So that is going to, it should, <laughs> when I apply it to the model, it should want to more run into the crevices of the model. That's normally the, the difference that I apply to a wash and a glaze. Um, I know other people have different definitions, um, but that's that. Um, paint, uh, obviously the paint right out of the bottle, I'm not thinning it. It's just the consistency that I want it. Um, so that's the difference between like the glaze and the wash is the paint is just simply, I think, thicker. Um, and I make a wash from my paint and I make, I can make the, the paint, you know, mix the paint in the matte medium to make that glaze. Um, now I do believe with an ink, an ink is more concentrated pigment. Um, and so you can't, I think it, I think it is, you can't make, you can't make an ink out of paint because the ink itself is heavily pigmented. So it's a difference of how much pigment you have. And, I, I think that's correct. Um, I would have to look it up to make sure I'm defining that the right way, but I do believe that's how that works and that's the differences um, for all of those. So hopefully that helps you and answers some of your questions too. Um, I definitely know that I like, I have bottles of ink, like um, I, I have a bottle of a really dark ink, um, Payne's Gray, and it really makes your, makes your shadows really dark. Um, so that's, that's helpful. Uh, let's see, do you, do, 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 I have to move my chat bar up. Okay. Um, I'm going to do, do you use a dry palette for your first coat, coat of color? I don't. You can, if you're more comfortable. I know like Rhonda, uh, Bender uses, I think she uses the ceramic paint wells, um, and those are dry. Those aren't wet pellets. Um, you can. I just find that it doesn't, um, it might dry a lot faster than if it's on a wet pellet. So the idea behind the wet pellet is that it just keeps my paint wet because it pulls up some of that water through the um, parchment paper. Um, so you can, but I don't. Um, so hopefully that answers the, that question. Um, okay. How do you get those transitions so smooth? Um, and how long do you recommend waiting in between layers? Do you need a th to thin a paint differently when layering versus base going? Okay, so let me start with that first part. Um, so the transition so smooth is, and I'm sorry, I don't know if I covered this, so I apologize. Um, I think I talked a little bit about the steps you take. Um, so the steps you take to uh, get to this color. So I'm working up to this color. So the more steps I take, the more like in between colors I'm creating here to get to this one. And I kind of do it this way. Well, actually what I do is I go like this and I'll add a little bit of this color. So when I'm painting and you can, it's kind of in miniature here, this miniature trans transition here. Um, until I get to the point where I don't have any of that red left in my paint, in the paint mixture, and I get to this point. 
So it's sort of like using the idea of a color gradient. Um, so the more in between, the more layers you're going to have in between, the smoother the transition is going to be. I also, as you saw when I was painting, I fudged it a little bit. Um, I, I did a little bit of wet blending or I showed you that if you had a hard edge between two paint colors that you could go in with a second layer of that, in, like an in-between paint. So if I have, you know, these two, whoop, I gotta clean my, I gotta clean my brush. So if I have these two together, then going in with this in-between color, right, and going and going between the two um, is just another way you can do it, um, just with those thin layers. So I think though that there's a lot you can do with layering. It doesn't just have to be a ton of layers. Um, it's just that 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 thin layer um, over the top of maybe that bad transition that you have can help fix that. Um, so it doesn't necessarily, you know have to be all of these steps. If you wanna come and go in between here, like I just did, I just showed you just a different way to kind of get rid of that transition. Um, and the dark to light, the dark to light here is just how it helps me. Um, so some people wanna work from a mid-tone up and then work from their mid-tone to their darks. and it's just with whatever you're comfortable with with painting. Um, let's see, how long do you recommend waiting in between layers? Uh, so I would say that you want to wait. I kind of showed you how I had that issue with the um, with the paint where the paint was breaking apart. Um, so I would I would wait. That's what I I talked about moving around the miniature as you paint. So I would wait till it's completely dry so it doesn't look wet on the miniature. Um, and you'll know, I mean, when you go to put that second coat down, you'll know if it's still wet underneath because that paint will move around. So I think that's a good indication too, is you're going to have the layer underneath that moves around as well. Um, let's see, do you need to thin a paint differently when layering versus base coating? Yes, so we covered that in the beginning. So with the base coat, I am going to have that thicker color. So I'm gonna really load up my paint and just throw down a base coat because the whole idea is to achieve, uh, essentially achieve that color, that base coat on the model before I work up to my lighter color. So my layer is going to have much less paint in my brush. So really I'm pulling, see I'm pulling away from the palette so it's going to have much less paint and I'm going to run out really quickly. So that's the difference with the layering and the base coating. So I hope that helps. Oh wait, I came late to the class and didn't have many or paints. Uh, I do not have PDFs for this class. Um, I don't normally have handouts. I just encourage people to take notes. Um, I do cover this on Miniature Monthly, and actually right now, if you guys go to my chat, um, my Discord chat area, uh, actually it's just not my Discord chat, but my name, and click on that, I have one of the Miniature Monthly videos available for free right now, and it will, I'm doing the same thing where I'm layering, so if you... <clears throat> We're a little late to the class and you want to see that again, I do have a video available for free that you can use to go back over what we did because I do layer in that as well. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, let's see. I've always been told not to, oh, hey, Joe, <laughs> not to put inks or metallics on a wet palette. Do you uh, ever run into the issues there? Um, I actually don't know because I guess I am just a snub and I normally don't use metallic paints, but that's not that I'm not against metallic paints, but I think that's more of like a question for somebody that works more with true metallic metal than non-metallic metal. So I have never tried that out, but now I'm, I'm interested to see what would happen. Um, so that's interesting and I really don't have an answer for you for that. So let's see. Let's see, in the shiny paint class yesterday, oh, just answering you, Joe. Uh, what kind of brushes did I use? Okay, so uh, 
I, as I said in the beginning of the class, uh, I am not like married to any sort of brush company or anything. It's just how they handle. Um, so right now, currently I have Game Envy brushes. Uh, and those are, I love those because I'm in the U.S. Um, and the shipping is really cheap and the brushes are really good quality for not a lot of money. So I like that too because I am cheap. I'm a starving artist. Um, <laughs> uh, and then like I just have, like I was just using, this is just a cheap synthetic brush from Walmart. And I know like James Wackel uses cheap synthetic brushes. The only issue you'll run into is that they won't last as long. Um, as your sable hair brushes. So that, so I was using, this is just a Rosemary and Company. I have a good one still. It's a size, it's a size two. And then I think my Game Envy was also a size two. And then I had a size uh, zero here with the Game Envy. And then this was just like a size three round. They're all round. So hopefully that, that helps. All right. So we're finishing up here. If anybody has any other questions, I think that's basically it. And um, I will say again, you guys can find me on Miniature Monthly. I work with Erin Lovejoy. I think, I don't know if these are backwards for you guys, but I can also take a picture. And all this is available in my chat, um, but I work with Erin um, we, we do our Patreon videos over there on Miniature Monthly. Um, you can find me on Instagram uh, as Miniature Mistress um, over there. And I'm on Facebook. And then what I'm going to do is once I'm done with the class here, um, I'm going to jump into just a basic, I'm just going to create a table. And if anybody wants to just come chat or talk or please also feel free to post your pictures in my uh, Elizabeth Beckley chat. Uh, for the class. If you want feedback, I am more than happy to give you some feedback there. Um, I can give you feedback like live on video. You can drop a picture in the chat channel or you can directly message me if you don't feel comfortable getting, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to critique you guys because um, we're not here to like get critiques. We're here to learn. So I'm not going to like art class level critique any of you. Um, just, I just want to help and, and be here to help. So if you're not comfortable dropping your pictures into a public chat, please just directly message me on the discord and I will try to answer everybody. Um, you know, in, in, an, in a thorough manner. Um, what? Give us the fire. <laughs> no. you, it's a critique. It's a critique sandwich. So you have to do the, the you know, like the compliment and then the, the harsh thing that they need to fix. And then you do another nice comment. That's, that's totally what I like to do. Uh, thank you guys so much. I'm so glad. And the I hope that you liked the class, um, and I hope that uh, if you're around, take my uh, non-metallic metal class tomorrow. I think it's at the same time. It's at 3 o'clock Eastern. Um, we're going to have fun with that, and then you can take what you learned with my layering class and apply it to that non-metallic metal class, so you kind of you kind of be ahead, because that's how I'm going to paint the miniatures. So, all right, let's see. It won't let me, oh, so my, the chat won't let you post. Um, I guess I'll go look at that. That's strange. It should, if it's just my chat, like where all my information is provided, I don't know if you can post in there. Um, but yeah. There, yes, there is two separate chats. There is the chat where it actually says chat, and then there's just the one that's her name by itself. The one that it says chat is the one where you can post. Cool. Thank you, Reaper Con voice from the sky. It's like Gen Con. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so I'm finished up here. So do I need to, I don't think anybody has any other questions. So I don't know if we're allowed to end the class a couple of minutes early or. I, I believe we're fully uh, able to. Uh, I did want to. I just checked the what it says online and the master schedule. It shows your class tomorrow. The basics of non-metallic metal is happening at three central time. Three central. According, yeah. yeah, three central according yeah. to the scheduling. Okay, sorry, I'm I'm on Eastern, so it's four o'clock for me. So I apologize. 
So yeah. No, that, I wanted to confirm that, uh, and I will also be here with you for that one tomorrow. So. Yes. Awesome. I will be. Somebody's telling me I'll be struck down for ending two minutes early. Actually, I've got ten minutes because we go till we go till five o'clock. So. <laughs> But yeah, if that's okay, I mean, I I think everybody. Oh, <laughs> is you, Bryce? Well, you know what? <laughs> no. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. So I think I think that's it. Um. Like I said, I'm gonna go open up a video channel. Um. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I miss everybody that's here that I know in real life, IRL. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. Um, let's see. So I just simply end the chat. That's all I need to do. Uh, yeah, you'll just hit the end button and then uh, it, it'll ask you what you'd like to do and you just hit end for everyone and it'll just close it all out. Okay. Awesome. Bye guys. Thank you so much.